Now to the latest Twitter sensation who had just about everybody fooled. She is a former teacher who has become a whistleblower against the hard left indoctrination in schools. This is the video that went viral and everyone thought it was genuine. Hi, Miss Luna, activist teacher here again, and I just wanted to share with you guys about how I am starting a new uh, communist lunch program in my classroom. So what I've been noticing is that my white privileged kids, they have much better lunches than my BIPOC students. So I wanted to make sure everything was more equitable in my class. So we started having a communist style lunch. So what I do is I ask all of the kids to put their lunches all together, um, every item of their lunch inside of a basket, and then at lunchtime I distribute it all equally to them so that they can all have um, a uh, more equitable lunches. And I have this one white privileged student and he's always complaining to me that he's getting the hummus and carrot sticks while the other kids are getting, the BIPOC kids are getting the six pack of Oreos. And I tell him, you know, I, even though I am doing my best to make this equitable, we also have to make up for 300 years of oppression. That video had everybody on Twitter fooled because we see so many videos like that, but it's actually the comedic work of Carly Fontanella and she joins me now. Carly, that was incredible. That went crazy. Tell me your reaction as you saw the, the millions of views on that video and everyone <laughs> believed that it was genuine. Well, I don't mind when Miss Luna, activist teacher, my uh, satire character goes viral because I am just putting <laughs> leftist beliefs in people's faces with comedic timing. And I think that people need to wake yeah. up. That's the reason why I created the character. I actually created the character on TikTok and got banned. So we're not allowed to make fun <laughs> of the left. And so it got banned. And then I was decided, you know what? I'm just going to start posting these videos on Twitter. It's interesting because I've received hate from both sides as myself. When I post as myself, I received hate from the left. When I post as a satire character, I receive hate from the right, rightfully so, though, because I'm saying some of the craziest stuff. But I have to say it's some of the most polite hate I've received because the hate from the left is like racial, <laughs> racial slurs, but the hate from the, life, the right is like she should be fired. And, of course, I should be fired if that teacher was real. <laughs> Well, there are teachers like that. We know that because we see these videos uploaded for real. But And that mask you were wearing in that clip, that's real. That was sent to you by the education department or a union. Tell me the story behind that. Yes, about a couple months after the George Floyd riots here in the U.S., I received an email from the superintendent of my school district saying that there is a gift for black teachers and in that gift was the Black Educators Matter mask, also a I Love Being Black <laughs> sticker, um, uh, a, a letter that said, I greet you in the ancient Af African greeting of Otep. There was some honey body wash. It was the most bizarre gift. And actually that video, I shared that <laughs> gift in a video and that video went viral. And I received a lot of hate saying that I hate myself and I hate being black because I didn't accept this weird pandering gift that was given to only the black teachers. So yeah, we're going a little nuts over here in the US. <laughs> Well, particularly in academia, from universities all the way down to, to little kids, and you taught in, in the system for 15 years. Tell me what the impact of that is. What, what, what is. What's the impact on the black children and also on the white children? Are they being made to feel that they're guilty for the, the crimes of their ancestors? Is this collective guilt uh, what's popular in, in, in the system? You know, it's so sad because in my 15 years of teaching, I have seen America become more racist and our young people become more racist than we, they were 15 years ago. So, for example, in my district, they gave the students, a, there was a required class for ninth graders, and the students were given a privilege quiz where they divided the class, they had them to do only do 15 questions and they divided the class by privilege and asked them how it feels to be on the top and how it feels to be on the bottom. And these are vulnerable, developing young minds that are getting these narratives fed to them. Mm. And all I am seeing is anger, resentment, more racism, more um, just 
aggressiveness, especially for those that are left leaning towards people that are rejecting these narratives, like what I've experienced in speaking up, which has been nonstop racism and racial slurs from the left for exposing this, which is really sad. Well, I do wonder whether some of the obsession the left has with race and race politics is projection, it's whether it's their own bigotry, because if you are a person of colour, and I've experienced this myself, and you challenge their worldview, they will come at you with the most vile, racist and sexist abuse when it's supposed to be what they fight against day and night. Yeah, exactly. And it is, and and they don't want you to expose that. You're not allowed to expose how racist the left is when you uh, go against their narratives here in the U.S. Like I've ex I've shared a lot of the comments I've received from them, and they always get taken down. These videos where I'm sharing all of the racist comments I've received, being called a C O O N word, a house N, a bed wench, just horrible oh. things. That I'm a 40 year old teacher. Why do I deserve to be called these things? Because I don't want our children to be taught that they're victims or oppressors. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's a bit more from our favorite activist teacher, your alter ego. Hi, it's Luna, activist teacher here, and I'm just getting fed up with all of the parents that like they need to be actively involved in their child's education. I mean, we are the trained professionals, not the parents. They don't know how to educate their kids. That's why they drop them off with us every single day. We are the ones with degrees. I mean, I got my four-year degree in indigenous basket weaving, and then I went to go get my teaching credential, which took a year. I am way more qualified to teach my student Kyle than his right-wing Trump-supporting parents. Parents' rights in education should be abolished. Children should be raised by the community. It was a parody, but I've played videos on this program and very similar to that, and they're real, including this one. Have a look. I have a master's degree because when I got certified, I was told I had to have a master's degree to be an Arizona certified teacher. We all have advanced degrees. What do the parents have? Are we vetting <clears throat> the backgrounds of our parents? We must remember that the purpose of public education is not to teach only what parents want their children to be taught. It is to teach them what society needs them to be taught. And we've been on a journey with you in recent days as you try a new gender. Day seven of being a girl and... Day seven of being a dude. And it has been one full week. And man, I have learned a lot. I learned that I can wear the same shirt two days in a row and just put a little more cologne on. One of the biggest challenges that I've learned this week is that I have a lot of things I put in my pocket, like my pocket knife and my chapstick and my phone and my wallet, and it was making my pants fall down. So I decided to start wearing a satchel. I think all my stuff can fit in it really easily, and I just wear the satchel, and then it's a satchel. So tell me, is this, I know you're having a bit of fun there, but we are seeing this ideal, ideology take hold in many classrooms. Uh, tell me about the gender confusion you saw in classrooms as well as the race politics. Well, I have to say 15 years ago, we had maybe one trans student in the whole school of 3,000 kids. Now we're having trans students, non-binary students in every single class. And this has become a social contagion in the U.S. And I think a lot of it has to do with TikTok. These kids are going viral for sharing their gender identities. Dylan Mulvaney's went viral for sharing his transition journey. And so I decided to mock it and be like, can I go get famous too? Put on a hat and put on a, you know, a beard a beard filter and just totally make a mockery of gender stereotypes and say that I'm a man because that's exactly what Dylan is doing. But it's given, there's so much attention that's happening for these people that are going viral and our young people are seeing that and wanting to get onto the trend. This has become a social contagion. And it is, it, it's a very alarming trend because it can lead to a lot of damage to their bodies if they really get into it and take the hormones and all of that other stuff. Well, absolutely, and there's a fantastic book by Abigail Schrey on that very theme on the social contagion. And uh, Dylan's not just uh, become a Twitter and TikTok sensation. 
they were in um, the White House, sat, sat down with the president and, and uh, were able to discuss this issue one-on-one -on -one with the president. So extraordinary stuff. Carly, thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I actually have an internationally accredited online school for parents who want to pull their kids from these indoctrination camps. And it's called Exodus Institute. And you can find that information at thinkexodus.org.